Well, hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, today what I'm going to do is talk about a frequently asked question that I've never answered. Uh, it's about mounting, preserving, and even just storing uh, your watercolors. Now, in particular, I'm going to deal with uh, exposed watercolors, which is a less common feature, although today it's becoming more popular. Uh, typically, watercolor is framed under glass with a mat. And by and large, I still prefer that way. However, gallery wraps and cradles like this are becoming more and more popular, and you'll get some that are quite deep. So with an edgeless, frameless look basically that's becoming very popular and in such cases you're not using a mat or glass although i am going to show you a, a frame i like which is a float frame but that's kind of an aside first let me just talk briefly about storage i've had a lot of people ask how i store i i'm really kind of just very basic with my storage i don't have a lot of big flat files i just basically put them in these uh sleeves these vinyl sleeves which are archival and designed to store artwork. And I just put them in portfolios and stand them vertically in a closet where I keep all my art. And that's where they stay until and unless I decide to frame one. I'll put some links below so you can see uh, what type of sleeve this is. But again, it's designed for art. It's acid free. Uh, art stays happily in there for as long as you want to until you get ready to frame it. It's a great solution. And of course they come in all different sizes. I did this quite a while ago. And if you've not seen this video, uh, I'll put a link below to it. This was a semi spontaneous video uh, or painting. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I signed this one and put 16. So this was early in the history of my channel. So I decided uh, I wanted to mount this on here. I've not done this very often. so. But I'm going to show you my process. And the first key is getting this mounted. I, I do the sealing and protecting once this is completely mounted and dry. You could probably do it first. Uh, there might be some advantages to doing it first so you don't mar it. But I'm usually careful enough. I'm not going to worry about that. The trick to this is, as you can see, how to crop it. How do I know where to trim it? So the way I'm going to do that is with a mat board. Now this gallery cradle is 8 by 10 so it's a standard size. What I do is I get a stock uh, pre-cut mat. You can get them at any craft store. They're very inexpensive. Get something larger than what you're trying to crop to. This was a 9 by 12 and all I did was I cut the corners. Just take your corners and snug it up to the mounting panel. Binder clip on each corner and that's your crop now you can take that and decide how you're going to crop this so i'm probably going to do it about like that i'll take a pencil very very lightly because you want to be able to erase this do not bear down as a matter of fact i'm just going to uh, tick the corners of where this is going to be cropped just uh very lightly now I want to leave a little extra so I can trim it flush once it's mounted and dried. So all I'm going to do is come out here and I'm just going to eyeball this. This doesn't have to be extremely accurate. I'm going about an eighth of an inch. Again, very lightly, although this part will never be seen. This will get trimmed off. I'm actually going to make this a little bit closer here. You don't want to go too far out with this line. You only want to give yourself a little bit of extra to trim. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you could make it more like a sixteenth of an inch if you want. Uh, otherwise, you've got the same problem with figuring out how it's going to crop when you get it on there. All right, so I have it marked. So now I'm just going to trim it. I'm going to go ahead and come inside that line again. I don't want to have too much extra here. I'm going to get as close to that crop as I can. If you haven't coated this first, which I prefer not to do, just be careful sliding things around on top of it so you don't scratch or mar it. Watercolors are actually pretty difficult to mar. You have to really be trying to scratch and abrade the surface to do a lot of damage, but it's, it pays to be careful. All right, so I've trimmed it. Now the uh, task is just to mount it. 
I've got some craft paper out here from a roll. Um, you could use newspaper, of course. Uh, we don't keep much newspaper anymore, don't have it. I really like craft paper though, because if you get a spill, it's easy to see. All I'm gonna do now is coat the back of these. Matte medium is probably one of the more popular ways to coat and mount these. I don't have any right now. Uh, I'm just gonna use this Mod Podge, which is very, very similar. Actually, if you're gonna go out and buy something specifically for mounting to panels, I would recommend a gel matte medium because it's less messy. It's easier to spread around without dripping. This takes just a little bit more care, but it's doable. And obviously it goes without saying, you want to be really careful with the front of your artwork. And I always keep uh, paper towels ready and waiting. And I'm going to coat both surfaces. My brush, this is just a cheap craft brush. Uh, I'm going to pour out a little bit because it won't fit in there. Start in the middle. And be careful with your edges because it will drip off the edges if you're not careful. So go gingerly towards the edge. I also like the uh, gel matte medium better than this because it, it has a little more body and it grabs, I think, a little better. However, this is perfectly acceptable and I'm just trying to use what I have. And as you're brushing it, that, that wood surface will tend to start drinking in some of it. That's kind of the point. That's kind of why I like to, to coat both surfaces. Just easy does it and you'll be in good shape. And you do want to get it right out to the edge. Just be careful, as I said, about leaving a bead or it's just going to run down the side. Okay. Work quickly because this stuff dries, starts to dry pretty quick. Be careful, but work quickly. <laughs> and once you start spreading this, and, and make sure you have a good clean surface underneath, don't move it because if you happen to get some off the edge uh, and then move your painting, slide it over, uh, you're in trouble. You're going to get stuff on the front. And this is drinking this stuff in much more readily, which is kind of what I, ex I expected being cotton watercolor paper. And I am gonna move it after I told you not to move it, but I need to be able to see. If you do have to move it, just check where you're setting it down. See, I got some there and I don't wanna scoot my painting over it. I'm going ahead and brushing right off the edge. So now it becomes more critical than ever that I don't move my painting. I'm just going to pinch right where the corners of my crop are to align it with the corners of the cradle. Should be close enough. I haven't used these, so I'm gonna place these. I'm gonna use a drawing board. And then pile some books. So I'll let that dry for a few hours and we should be good to uh, start trimming it and coating it. All right, so this is dried and pressed for 24 hours, actually longer than that, but we shall see what we've got. I'm not sure you even need 24 hours, but I wanted to be sure it was nice and pressed. And I didn't mention it before, but the only reason that I used this drawing board was to get even pressure all the way out to the edge. And it was easier to do that rather than place books right on top of this. Make sure I got nice adhesion right out to the edge. Pretty good, pretty good. I'm satisfied. And you can see how much of an edge I have overhanging. And you don't really need that much. Again, if your crop is very, very precise, uh, you might want to make your size just a little closer. But a little bit of overhang is, I think, necessary just so you can get a flush trim, which is what we're gonna do next. All right, so the task now is just to trim that away. Again, you want to be careful of your painting. Uh, this is a pretty clean, dry surface, but uh, just to be doubly safe, I'm just going to put down this, this clean paper towel. Okay, so I'm going to use this X-Acto break-off blade uh, knife. An X-Acto blade works fine, too. Uh, the reason I like this is because of this flat side. I can get more straight up and down. You're going to be angling your knife a little bit. There's almost no way around that. 
That way I'm assured of getting a really nice, fresh, sharp blade. And if you're not sure, if you haven't used it in a while, just go ahead and break off that end one. Just take your time. If you've not cut through a board or thick paper with an X-Acto knife before, get some scraps and try it. Practice. <laughs> I mean, it's not hard, but you know, um, it can be daunting if you haven't done it before. <clears throat> and make sure also that you don't angle your knife in like this or you'll cut into this wood. Final cut. Let me just get a close-up of how the knife's writing here. You can see this edge here on this particular knife, and it would be about the same on a box cutter. If you used a round X-Acto knife, it would actually hold it out a little more, and you'd have to angle it even more. That's why I like this. Um, so it's it's holding it out. If I, if I did it completely flush to this surface, you can see it would hold my blade out. So I have to angle it in. And I also have to angle it just slightly this way. Once you get one cut, though, you have a groove that it follows. So I hope I'm not making that too complicated. I've, I've already got a nice cut groove. And this knife's going to ride very well in that groove. So I'll just take several swipes. Go lightly. Don't try to cut through all in one pass. I want you to see here my crop that was my crop tick mark it was off just a tiny bit and here it is in the bottom by using that pinch alignment method but that's okay that's that much tolerance is fine I have a little bit of white space there where I should have brought it down a little bit more that bit there doesn't bother me a bit all right I'm real happy with that that's a nice flush mount I'm just going to use a soft eraser and take off those tick marks that are showing. There's a little bit of one showing there. And if you marked it lightly as I suggested, they come right off. Now let's talk about sealing. And there are actually a number of ways to do this. What I'm going to start with is a UV archival varnish. This is gloss. It really doesn't matter because this is an undercoat. And all I'm doing with this is using it as a fix. Because when I do the brush on coat, and this is my second step, this is a golden gel medium top coat. And this is semi-gloss. This will actually be what my finish is. And when I go to brush this on, I want to make sure none of the paint loosens up. That's what this is for. And yes, uh, the question inevitably comes, can I just use a fixative? Yes, you can. I have this though, and the only reason I'm using this is because I, it's going to add a little bit of extra UV archival protection. Normally I frame my watercolors under glass and I use a museum quality archival UV glass, you know, that filters that. So when there's going to be a piece with no glass, uh, I just decided to use this. All of this is artist quality paint, so UV shouldn't be a problem, but hey. I have it, I'm going to use it. And again, fixative is fine. Mainly, you just want this not to run or be able to loosen any of the paint when you go to do the brush on. Okay? Do this outside. And that's what we're going to go do. It's a bit humid out here today. The conditions are not ideal. But I'm going to take it in almost immediately to dry. So. To anticipate a question which usually gets asked, will the spray darken the watercolor? It might a little bit. Now I'm going to spray very lightly and very dryly. If you get down and spray too directly and closely and get a very wet spray on there, you may end up darkening the watercolor some. We'll see. Uh, uh, it's been a while since I've done this. I don't recall having a problem before, so I'm going to go for it. coat number one and I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry. I think that's enough of a fix that I can use the brush on now. All right so I think this by and large is dry. Dry to the touch. Actually the instructions say it's dry to the touch uh, in 15 minutes. It's been about an hour. 
you could let it go longer if you want. And I like this stuff. It's a gel medium. Uh, it doesn't really require any shaking up or even stirring. It goes on easy. It's, it's easy to keep from running and spilling. And there's really nothing to it. I'm going to use the same brush I used before. Don't make the coats too thick. Brush lightly. There are a number of top coats that are popular. Um, another very popular one is uh, wax, like Dorland's. That's a fine way to go. And it probably goes without saying. You just want to get a nice even spread. It looks a bit hazy and milky when you put it on, but it dries clear. You just want to be careful of these over brushes on the edge. I'm just going to look all over it to make sure it's coated. When you get the overbrushing beads on the edge, uh, you can use a paper towel. I just like to use my finger. And I wipe it out here, part of the craft paper that I'm using. I think I'm going to go over it one more time. Felt like in places it was kind of dry. And if you want to reduce uh, the brush strokes, after you've got it evenly coated, just do a very light smoothing stroke. Get all those brush strokes going on in one way, in one direction. They don't particularly bother me. If they bother you, you might want to use a more liquid top coat and a less, and a less stiff gel-like one. I'll just usually wet my brush after I clean the majority of it out. Just wet it and do a smoothing stroke which is so so light basically it's just barely the weight of the brush all right we're gonna let that dry and through the magic of time lapse video here's what it looks like when it dries all right this is thoroughly dry now and I am really, really happy with this. Looks great. I even like the, the brush stroke texture on the front. This gives it a nice uh, sort of artsy surface. I used a fairly stiff brush. Uh, you can probably minimize these, these brush strokes if you don't like it with a softer brush. What I used was, was really pretty stiff. Um, but really they're not that noticeable unless you're looking at it in the, in the light. That said, I personally don't mind them at all. I like that. I don't see any darkening of this. If anything, it's gotten just a little bit more intense rather than darkening, but the values are, are just great. I like that. I just, I, just, I just do. I think it looks good. Now, one thing that's typically done on gallery cradles like this is the edges are painted, so that's something you could do if you wanted to do that. You know, you could pick, uh, usually it's a dark color, uh, complementary, like a gray, like this gray in here, or even uh, a very warm black. You usually want to pick something that's complementary to the piece. Uh, and then you can hang these just as is. You know, put a mounting bracket on the back. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to use uh, a float frame. Uh, these are specifically designed for gallery cradles like this. Uh, this one mounts with Velcro. Uh, some other ones uh, come with holes instead and you mount with screws from the back. So I've already applied the Velcro to the back. And you just kind of have to space these uh, by eyeball when you drop them in. I really like that. I really, really like that. I'm going to probably be doing more pieces like this. All right. Thank you, Minders. I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you have any questions, put them below. Uh, if there are others of you that have processes for mounting, sealing, and preserving uh, your paintings, uh, your watercolors, go ahead and put your process down there and, and uh, let your fellow viewers know what works for you. Thanks again, everyone, and thank you so much, patrons, for sponsoring this channel.
you're making this content possible and i so appreciate it and we'll see everybody in the next video bye bye